fly I'm tying for you is called the Terra X. I started tying it right around 1998, 1999, 2000. Uh, it builds on the success of another pattern developed up on my waters called the Turk's Tarantula. And Guy Turk, who developed that fly, developed it, developed it by basically taking some of the best qualities of the Madam X, a, a, a fly that he was a very, very big uh, fan of. This fly, I'm basically taking the uh, tarantula and I'm backtracking and bringing in more qualities of the Madam X. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm tying a form of Madam X that takes in the best qualities of the Turk's tarantula. Got a size 8 hook here. This here is a uh, Dairiki uh, size 8 700 hook and going to be using a, a 140 uh, UTC thread right there. It's kind of a fluorescent orange. Get that it, onto the hook. Take it all the way back to the bend. And we'll tie on our tail. The tail is going to be uh, golden pheasant uh, neck fibers. Uh, wings basically, golden pheasant neck wings. Uh, the original Turks tarantula used Amherst uh, pheasant. I'm going to use golden here. Pick up one tail and adhere that to the body basically. Tying in, you can kind of see, right at the base of the second black band. You got the one at the tail and you got your orange and this, that, that black band right there. That's where we're tying it in at. And that's where we stop. Now, instead of trimming on this, this trimming off this excess, I'm going to actually tie that excess down. I'm doing that to help uh, form bulk to the body, give the body a bit more bulk. Uh, this fly is basically an attractor. It's used to, uh, quote, imitate uh, stone flies, the uh, uh, salmon fly, obviously, the Clasenia, as well as the golden stone. So I've wrapped that forward. Now I'm going to actually bend this back and wrap back just before that tail. Trim that off. And again, what we've done there is this is forming bulk. It's going to give the body material uh, a bit more of a fuller, robust look. I'm going to tie quite a bit of this down. Now your body material. Uh, originally I started using dubbing. I uh, still like to use a lot of rabbit dubbing, muskrat dubbing, squirrel dubbing. Um, but I also am kind of a fan of foam, obviously. And I'm going to use this two-tone foam here. It's, uh, orange black, or I'm sorry, black orange black. And that's the material we're going to use to help form the body. Securing that. And we're going to use black hackle along the body. And what that's going to do is help kind of create uh, a ribbing look to it. Kind of a, the, uh, it helps to accentuate the, uh, the ribbing appearance of that abdomen. You only need one fiber. Obviously this is Whiting Farms uh, hackle, probably the best hackle made and you pay for it too, let me tell you. So now you wrap that forward. The great thing about dubbing, right here you can stop with your dubbing, bring it forward, tie in legs, then redub and bring it forward. So instead of four, you know, or two pairs of legs that I'm going to have on this one, you can have four. Haven't yet developed a good way to do that with this foam. Not that it matters too much. This is still a pretty successful fly um, um, as it is. Brought that all the way forward to where it drops off that part of the body. And now we're going to wrap the foam forward, okay? And I'm overlapping black on black, as you see.
and this is only one millimeter foam, you want to be careful of that hook point. It can tear that foam and then that foam just uh, splits away and tears and breaks basically as you pull it. So you want to be careful of that hook point. End it right there. Now I'm going to take that hackle and I'm going to begin wrapping it forward and what I want to do is wrap it right about on the orange. You can kind of see it's getting right wrapped on the orange. That helps cover some of that brighter color up just a bit. Um, you know, sometimes a bright fly, uh, especially on the surface, doesn't really get the fish up. They come to investigate it, then they back up some. This helps cover it up, but you still got those little bands of orange. And I like the way that looks a little bit better. So now we formed the body. Next thing we're going to do is go to the wing. And the wing is going to be tied with bear hair. Um, Ken Burkholder, he's the gentleman that created the club sandwich and uh, he turned me on as well as many others in the Snake River area to bear hair and its great qualities as wing material. Watch how I'm going to do this. Go ahead and just kind of cut this wing material down. Separate some of it out. Now typically when you're using hair, it's the butt sections you're going to tie in, right? Not with bare hair. You actually tie it in at the tip and leave the hair itself sticking up because it's the base of the bare hair that creates this real translucent effect um, as the sun shining down through it. You can look up at it and it looks a little bit more the way the sun would shine through a, a natural wing. Or at least we, that's what we think. I'm going to tie that wing in right here. One way you can do this is to double it up. Take that wing material forward, but then these tips get in the way. So I don't like doing that too much. And I'm going to wrap this all the way forward. Doubling the wing up really make sure that it doesn't slip. That's, that's the whole idea behind that. Um, because you can't do that because of these tips, I'm going to really wrap that thread forward like so, and that should definitely secure it. And then really wrench down on it as you bring your thread back to the base there. Boom. And there's your wing, and you can see it just kind of slightly hangs over Slightly hangs over the tail. Bring your thread forward again. Now we're going to create the head of the fly. So to form the head, we're going to use just very simple two millimeter brown foam. Um, you can get this almost any fly shop. I actually got this from Orvis. Uh, Wopsy creates a good good material, as does uh, uh, well, just a whole host of, of uh, material makers. So trimming this down, wanna, that's a bit too wide for what I would like. I think something like that would be a bit better. And we're going to tie this in with the actual butt section facing towards the back of the fly as opposed to the front the way we would do it with uh, so much of the, of the other material we use for this fly and other flies. So that's going to form the head. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this back and it'll be basically a shell back head um, after we tie in the material for what I call the mandible. Um, 
And with that, what you're going to be creating is a, a rounded head similar to what you have with a uh, Madam X. Um, and because it's not constructive deer like a Madam X, this is pretty darn durable. This can take successive strikes and, you know, the teeth can scar the foam but really not destroy it the way it can a, a bullet deer hair head. To create the mandible, I'm going to use ostrich plume. Um, many times I'll use uh, peacock curl. Peacock curl is fantastic material. Uh, this is a good substitute as well because of all those little microfibers and they kind of hang down in the water and do a little dance that I think attracts the fish quite a bit. Trim off, I'm going to trim off three, I think, yeah. Did I say three? I think I got four here. Yep, I got four. No matter. Okay. Tying that in. And I'm going to wrap that back to there. Trim off those excess butts. And now I'm going to wrap this material right on back, making sure I'm covering most of that up. Yep. That's the mandible, basically, just the underside of the underside of the head. Pull that foam forward or backward, really. There's your rounded head. Crim that down right about to there. And that's going to get covered up here in just a bit. Now let's attach our legs. Any type of leg material will work. Your just basic round, medium rubber. Um, also, uh, a material called uh, flexi floss will work as well. This is a, a form of flexi floss as well that its name I can't really remember. <laughs> but the important thing is that almost any leg material will work. Anything you use for a Chernobyl ant, this will work just as well. One leg in. My second leg, kind of long, so you trim them down. And I like having the front part of the legs, the front pair shorter than the back pair. And so you got legs attached to this fly the same way you would with the Madden Max. And uh, uh, this slightly uh, different than how it is with a Turk's tarantula. But the idea is to have a pair of legs on each side, and that's what we have here. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie that foam down that's sticking up. There. And now we'll tie in an indicator foam, basically. You don't really need an indicator for a fly this big. I mean, if you probably can't see that wing, probably don't want to be fishing. But we're going to tie this in there basically to kind of make the fly a little bit pretty, prettier. And it's going to help cover up that material right there. So. And there's your indicator. I'm going to just half hitch this. You can also do it with a wide pair of a wide uh, whip finisher. But half hitching is just as easy. And if you are going to whip finish, definitely, or uh, if you're going to be half hitching, definitely use an adhesive, a type of head cement. 
help keep that down so it doesn't come loose at all. that down. I'm going to now trim the indicator. And that's your Terra X. Uh, the salmon flies start attacking our rivers. Uh, the Henry's Fork in late May, they'll start to appear on the South Fork and uh, South Fork of the Snake River. And right around, definitely by the middle of June, and then we also have Glycinias on the upper Snake River in Wyoming. Those will begin to appear in the uh, second half of August. This is a great fly for all of those, uh, all of those stoneflies.